Look at the movie on the screen behind me and please listen carefully what you will hear. Do you hear something? Listen carefully. Mm. What is that sound? Where is that sound coming from? Mm. So, the same kind of sound was first recorded in the world in 1952, which is 66 years ago from now. They recorded in Hawaii by US Navy. From that moment, people started wondering, what is that sound? Where is the sound coming from? Like yourself right now. And finally, in 1971, a scientist found out the sound was actually the voice of humpback whales. And the scientist also found that the voice is only emitted by a male humpback whale in the breeding seasons in the breeding areas. And humpback whale is a whale something like this, and they are a baleen whale and they become more than 14 meters long for their body lengths. And they are a pretty active kind of whale and they often do jumps like this. And the jumping action of whales is often called breaching. And let's talk a little bit more about the sound of whales and dolphins. So surprisingly, only 66 years ago, none of the people know that whales and dolphins are emitting the sound like that and communicating to each other. But how about now? I think many of the people already know that sound and voices is one of the important communication tools for whales and dolphins. But on the other hand, have you ever heard that the pitches of the voices of dolphins and whales is getting higher and higher these days? Why is that? Is it just their trend to use higher voices these days? I don't think so. The scientist thinks that this is because of the change in the atmosphere in the ocean. So along with the evolution of science, human activity extend even to the ocean areas. So it is not hard to imagine that ocean now is much noisier than the ocean in 50 or 100 years ago. So let's think about an example of ourselves. So what would you do if you need to cry out for your friend's name in noisy situation like this? And let's say your friend is a guy over there, and let's say his name is Chris. And what kind of voice are you going to use to cry out for your friend's name? Will you use your normal voice? Hey, Chris, I'm here, Chris. Or will you use a little bit lower voice than your usual voice, like, hey, Chris, hey, Chris. I think many, most of the people in this room will naturally use a little bit higher pitched voice than your usual voice. Hey, Chris! Oh, oh, now he noticed me. Like that, Chris. <laughs> so, this is because we naturally understand the nature of the sound. And we know that we need to use a little bit higher pitched voice in the noisy situation like this. And let's think about whales and dolphins are in a situation like this now. So a lot of vessels, boats are going over them back and forth. So maybe it is pretty noisy in the ocean too. So scientists assume these days whales and dolphins are naturally adjusting their voices a little bit higher tone according to the changes around them. So from those facts, these days people are trying to reduce the speed of the vessels or preventing vessels to going through to the certain areas of ocean, the places where is important places for whales and dolphins, such as their breeding areas or nurturing areas. And people could do something like that because we already know that whales and dolphins are using their voices to communicate to each other and we already know that their voices are getting higher and higher, maybe because of the human activities. 
And I think this is one good example of a case that we, human, adjusted our way of living just a little bit to reduce the negative impact to the lives around us. And I think this is one of our important role of science. Important role of science is to deliver new information which we discover through science to the people around us. And next, think with those people, think about how we can use these new information to make the world around you a little bit better. And I also believe that this is one of the important thing of my work as a scientist. So I work at Research Center of Okinawa Chirashima Foundation, which runs Okinawa Chirami Aquarium. And what I do is I do researches on whales and dolphins mainly. And actually the movie and the sound you heard uh, in the beginning of this lecture was which we filmed and recorded in the ocean in the west side of Okinawa maybe two years ago. And to tell you the truth, humpback whales, which migrating to the area around Japan, including Okinawa, is now designated as endangered species. Once there were so many humpback whales all around the world, however, the number reduced drastically once, mainly because of the commercial whaling which was conducted all around the world until 1960s. But now, the numbers of humpback whales shows increasing tendency. And according to our research, now about 1,500 humpback whales are migrating to Okinawa every year. And, but the numbers of humpback whales are increasing but sadly, uh, many of the people in Okinawa don't even know that there are whales in the ocean around their islands. So therefore today, I would like to introduce a little bit more about your neighbor's humpback whales uh, by sharing interesting stories which we discovered from our research. So humpback whales distribute all around the world and they distribute in colder water areas, which is colored blue in this map, during summer and fall. And while they are there, they just eat and eat and eat, doing nothing else for half a year, which I envy about them very much. <laughs> I'd like to live like that someday. Just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, so when end of the fall comes, both males and females start to migrate to southern area, to the warmer tropical area, which is colored orange in this map. And now you all know that humpback whales are migrating to this area, to Okinawa, to mate, to give birth, and to raise their babies. And the main purpose of our research on humpback whales is estimating the number of humpback whales in this area. And we also study about their life histories, which is still poorly understood. And not only doing the researches, we try hard to share those informations to the local people by holding lectures, something like this. And this is our research vessel. A captain of this fishing boat is really a nice guy, kind guy, who we are working with him more more than 10 years now. And kindly, he set up this special stage for us every year during the humpback whale survey season, which is January to April. So we got up on the stage and stayed there to look for well from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., except we need to go to the bathroom. And how can we find whales? We find whales using our own eyes. And key to find whales is their blow. So blow is their exhaled air from whales. And if you are a good, experienced researcher with good eyes, you can even find blow from four or five kilometers away. And once we find whales, we go behind them and slowly approach them like this. And most important 
data we want to take during the survey is the pattern of their tail flukes, like that. And did you know that the shapes and patterns of humpback whales is different with each individual, like our fingerprints or like our faces? So we can actually distinguish the each whales using these characteristic patterns. And we can actually understand a lot about humpback whales using this information. For example, this is a whale we first observed him in 1991, which is a year we started our research in Okinawa. And if you look closely to the whale, can you see a pattern looks like alphabet Z? And the captains and the staffs and the stakeholders of whale watching tour companies around the Okinawa area call this whale Z after his unique pattern on his tail freak. And this Z is first observed in 1991, and he keeps coming back to Okinawa almost every year until now, over 27 years now. So this is a photo of the same whale Z, which we photos uh, this year, this spring. And we can assume from this record that Z is at least over 27 years old now. And we also know Z is a male humpback whale because we observed him singing a song in Okinawa many times. And speaking about the age of humpback whales, it's actually very difficult to tell their ages. But if you can take a photograph of tail flukes of a whale when they are newborn baby like that, we can track their record and we can tell their ages. And I like this photo very much. A cute baby calf as it looks like trying to imitate its mother, slapping the surface. And like the example of Z, now we know many of the humpback whales are keep coming back to Okinawa uh, more over than 20 years, up, 20 years now. And we are also sure that some of the humpback whales are keep coming back to Okinawa over 70 or 80 years now, according to their known lifespans of humpback whales. And every year, in the beginning of January, I sometimes hear conversation between captains of fishing boat or whale watching tour boats saying, oh, did you hear Z already came back to Okinawa this year? Or sometimes something like, oh, I saw Sachie today with her baby this year, something like this. So if you have no idea what they're talking about, you may think that they're just talking about sons or daughters of their neighbors or something like that. And I like this very much. And I really hope people will stay like this in the future too. And I really hope that people will continue feeling about a whale or other living creatures as your neighbors who are sharing the same living places at the same moment. And the more and the more people feel like that, then I feel it will make us feel a little bit easier to feel like, oh, okay, I want to do something nice to our favorite neighbors. And if you do good to your neighbors, it may return to you in some way someday because you're sharing the same places at the same moment. And now it's October and humpback whales are in a colder water area somewhere, Russia or Alaska. But I'm sure uh, some of them are about to start traveling south toward Okinawa or maybe some other breeding areas in the world. And I'm already looking forward to hear the captain saying, ah, Z already came back to Okinawa this year too. I like this very much. And I hope uh, I'd like to, uh, I hope, I'd like to continue working here as a scientist who can breach the barriers of science like whale with whales uh, by sharing amazing story about the whale and other living creatures to the people around me and even to the people around the world to make the world around us a little bit better together with you. 
Thank you very much.